Hi there. Well, I thought spring had sprung, but I've just been out with the dog and uh, the temperature's down to zero degrees freezing and it started snowing again. But anyway, um, in my last video, I asked for uh, any advice and guidance on um, CNC control systems and I got some fantastic feedback. So I've done a bit more research and I ended up uh, buying this, uh, the black box which is, um, they call it a black box motion control system by Open Builds. And in this video, I'll talk about um, why I decided on this particular controller. We'll have a look at the uh, some of the functionality and uh, I'll do a bit of work on um, installing the motors. So when I started looking at uh, CNC uh, router engravers, um, I was quite attracted to the uh, Ousnest Workbee. Um, which comes in kit form and Who's Nest is a UK based company and uh, it, it ticked most of the boxes for me because uh, it had uh, built-in stepper drivers and uh, browser based because I, I don't have um, a Windows laptop or uh, an Apple Mac or anything like that um, the only thing that put me off it was the fact that it's not really constructed to uh, hold um, VFD spindles, uh, but they're apparently quite heavy and uh, the, the work bee is sort of more designed to hold uh, like a palm type router, router. and uh, it, I suppose mainly used for woodworking as opposed to uh, cutting metal um, so that sort of ruled that out really for me and um, when, when I started looking around um, one of one of my sort of requirements was to have it a browser based sort of type system um, because I haven't got a PC well, a laptop um, as such and uh, I came across this Build Biotics which is a, a, a an American based company and uh, the controller functionality is sort of similar to the Usenest in the fact that um, you know it's got built-in stepper drivers and it's browser based but the only big negative for me was it $500 um, before you add shipping and UK import duty and taxes um, so once you've once you've added all that it comes in over $600 um, which sort of put me off a bit now having sort of considered all the uh, suggestions uh, from from people watching my videos um, I ended up looking at um, an open builds black box now open builds have an online shop based in the US and they sell this at about $199 I think however um, Oosnest in the UK also sell this so this is where I got this from uh, the only negative with Oosnest is um, the door hold all the open builds um, sort of add-ons so for example the motors whose nest sell their own motors which has got a slightly different wiring convention um, whose nest do sell the xy um, z probe because they sell their own probe and i don't think it's compatible with this so um, if i was to buy a probe I've, i'd have to buy it from the states but maybe at this point in time i don't really need to buy a probe and i can attach the um, Oosnest motors to this I think so that shouldn't be a problem and I bought the motors anyway from Oosnest and um, it, it sort of ticks all the boxes for me does this apart from the fact that it's not browser based uh, it comes with free downloadable software which runs on Windows or, uh, or Apple um, so what I've ended up having to do is uh, by a laptop, Windows laptop, but hey ho, um, it is what it is, um, and I can use that laptop for other things as well. And the the control software uh, is a free download onto the laptop, very intuitive, easy to use. Um, the only problem I've got at the moment is um, I ordered a power supply with this, and uh, who's nest have unfortunately forgot to put the power supply uh, in the package. So I'm waiting for one of those to arrive. So um, what I can do in this video is talk a little bit about this functionality of this. 
and uh, look at installing the um, the uh, motors that I've got from uh, Ooze Nest as well and the limit switches so um, I think this used to come in kit form but now it's sort of ready assembled and um, on this end here these connectors unplug um, and here you can uh, connect up your motors and uh, you've got uh, connections for your probe um, you've got connections for limit switches as well so I bought limit switches from Ooze Nest as well um, they're not the open build ones I think the open build ones have got better functionality but I think I think it'll be all right and um, on here uh, this end here you've got a USB connector to connect to your laptop and uh, various other bits and pieces um, door opening um, not too sure what all these are I'm, I'm sure it'll come uh, clear when I start uh, having to make it work <laughs> and uh, this is the input for the power supply which I haven't got at the moment uh, but all in all pretty neat and like I say it's got um, the built in stepper drivers so it really simplifies the um, the wiring you don't have all that bulk. So this is one of the motors that I've got from Ooze Nest, and it's um, a 345 ounce one, uh, 3 amp maximum, and uh, it's compatible with the uh, open build controller. Now, the wiring convention on, on these motors is slightly different to the um, open builds motors. Um, so what, what I've done is I've uh, just put a continuity tester on these pins here and I've worked out that um, red and green go to one coil and yellow and blue go to another coil and having looked at various diagrams um, and uh, talking to Olivier uh, we've concluded that the red is A plus, the green is A minus, the yellow is B plus and the blue is B minus. So uh, that's how I'll wind them up in here. Now I've also bought some uh, limit switches from Who's Nest, and um, the um, Open Builds controller, um, as far as I understand it, on its basic settings. Um, it will run with the contacts open so in this form here um, the left far left and the far right pin are open the pin, uh, those two make contact um, so you get a circuit um, when the switch closes so I think with these I'm going to maybe 3d print um, a piece of plastic. The, these are designed to fit on some of these extruded aluminium uh, shapes um, so there's no protection here at the back of these pins so if I was to attach that directly to some aluminium uh, it will be shorting so I think I'm going to 3D print um, sort of like um, a thin piece of plastic here um, to go between this and um, the actual aluminium that I'm going to attach these to and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, maybe something like epoxy them on um, there's no point in drilling holes and stuff like that because uh, the epoxy will hold these uh, rock solid so the distance between the frame and the motor is just over 50 millimeters and um, I've got these I made these when um, I made the Stuart half beam, a bit oversized. Um, but what I'm going to do is cut these down to size a little bit. They're, they're already threaded, um, but I think they're BA threads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-thread these to um, an M6 and an M5. And then I'll put a bolt through here, screw it onto there, and then uh, Put uh, an M5 screw through here.
so for this rear motor um, I'm using uh, some bar stock that was left over from a previous project and it's uh, I've, I've approached it differently from um, Olivier's design because Olivier has got a thread on the end of, on the end of this that screws into uh, the actual frame um, but on this one um, th these are a bit too short so I've threaded these on the inside and then I'm bolting it through from the other side of the frame but I'll have to uh, follow Olivier's design on the uh, on the motors that actually makes for a really strong connection it's looking good so for these spacers I've just uh, threaded the inside there it's got a bit of threaded rod screw it in and screw that in there So I shall use a similar method for the uh, x-axis but I'll do that off camera. And that's all the motors installed. And one thing I probably haven't mentioned is uh, when I was uh, removing the sort of end flow out of the uh, ball, end of the ball screws, I used spacers and also some of these shim washers. I got some M10s as well. They came in really useful. Well, the good news is the power supply has arrived, so it's just a matter of connecting it to the mains, and then uh, taking a positive of this rail um, into the black box and a negative off this rail into the black box and making sure that I've got polarity right. And uh, I've previously switched that on and the software on the PC, which has gone to sleep at the moment, did actually recognise um, it was attached. So the connections for the motor go A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. And from what I can gather, those uh, colour codes are right. So it's just a matter of plugging this in into the black box. So we're going to go for the uh, y-axis here. And it's as simple as that. So the black box is connected to the uh, laptop through the USB port. And up here it's saying uh, FTDI USB to serial COM3. So I've connect it goes through various checks and uh, finds the firmware. Firmware detected Gerbil version 1.1G. So that's encouraging. And I've just connected up the uh, Y axis motor. And we'll give it a try. If I select Y plus, A, and minus, it 
I'm not sure whether minus and plus is right, but um, it's certainly moving. <laughs> whether it's the right direction, I'm not so sure. I need to check that. But anyway, um, I'll connect up the other motors and then I'll get back to you. Well, I've connected all of the axes up and um, I've set the incremental to one millimeter. So if I go Y minus, and it is going in the right direction. Do X. And uh, do the spindle. spindle minus why and do the X now I found a slight problem here because it looks like when I move it one millimeter, I would expect the dial to read 40, just under 40 thou. It reads just under 30. <laughs> so uh, that needs uh, some investigation, I think. Um, I mean, I'm guessing it will be the same on uh, all three axes, so I'll check that. And there's another sort of strange anomaly. I've uh, connected. Uh, this limit switch up to the x-axis and I, I've checked that the connection is right so that sort of creates a closed circuit when I do that but unfortunately if I close the circuit and try moving the x-axis it still moves so I don't know whether that's some kind of a setting on the controller that I need to investigate. But apart from those two things, it's looking extremely encouraging. Now then, I've been having a bit of a play with this software and I found this bit here. Um, troubleshooting. And it tells you the status of the um, inputs and end stops. So, um, currently the switch is open so it's saying the limit switch is off if I close the switch it goes on so the software is recognising that the switch is going on or off but it actually doesn't stop the x-axis from moving I just don't I can't get my head around it so there must be another setting somewhere and I've also found that uh, there's a requirement to calibrate the uh, software and hardware so um, what you do is apparently if you go into the x-axis you uh, mark on the machine the position uh, the initial position then um, you using the calibration software uh, you move it um, 100 millimeters uh, mark it and then uh, you actually measure the actual distance and you can uh, tell the software what the actual distance is and um, then it will uh, you know resolve that particular problem um, so there's an answer to that one which is good so I, I need to have a good play around with this software well this is getting exciting and uh, I, I can't believe uh, how well it seems to work at the moment I mean I, I need to have a good play around with the uh, software uh, but basic functionality seems to be there um, all apart from these limit switches um, I mean obviously I need to calibrate the machine but I know how, I know sort of the method to use to do that um, but these limit switches I have no idea why um, you know why they're not working the software is recognizing that the switch opens and closes but uh, there's no action being taken 
Um, so maybe it's my misunderstanding in terms of how these things work. Um, but I, I noticed a few comments on the internet. I mean, the, the support on the internet seems to be really good for this open build stuff. And uh, somebody suggested setting the Goebel dollar five to one. Um, default is zero, which means it's open. So it should work when it's open, which is which it is open. I changed it to one, but no difference. Um, somebody else suggested dollar twenty-seven, which is the homing pull-off, whatever that is, and uh, that's set to one millimeter at the moment. So I changed that to half a millimeter, no difference. Changed it to two millimeters, no difference. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, capture the Goebel settings as they are at the moment, just the defaults, um, as you know, uh, factory sort of set defaults uh, in the machine, and uh, I'll put those either in the video description or uh, in a pinned comment. So if anybody's any sort of advice um, on how I might be able to get these limit switches working, I'd really appreciate it. I mean, there are some settings in there that seem to relate to limit switches, but I have no idea what they mean. Um, so yeah, any advice and help, really appreciated. And in the meantime, I'll carry on doing a bit of research on the internet. And um, I've uh, ordered a spindle and a VFD. Now, Olivier's got a water-cooled spindle, which I think run really nice and quiet. Um, but I'm sort of, you know, really keen to start making something with this machine. So and I just want to keep it as simple as possible for the moment. And I can upgrade later on, so I've just gone for an air, um, an air cooled one and see how I get on with that. Uh, but I think it should be all right. And uh, I've, ordered, I've got it from Vivo. Um, it seems to be a UK address, uh, but whether or not it comes from China, I'm not too sure. Uh, but hopefully, uh, that should arrive within the uh, next week or so, so I can uh, cover that in the next video um, and give you an update in terms of um, what I've been messing around with. And uh, what I'll also do is I'll put links to uh, the Usenest site and uh, the Open Builds uh, uh, part site, which is uh, USA based. And uh, what I'll try and do in the future is uh, to become an affiliate of uh, both those suppliers. So uh, by somebody clicking on those affiliate links, um, if they buy anything, I might get a few bob, which it, you know helps keep these videos going, to be honest. And uh, I'll also put a link in the description, uh, yeah, in the video description, to um, the Open Builds documentation. Um, because that seems pretty good stuff. Um, but anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I can't wait to have another play so uh, I'll get off for now. Hope to see you later. <laughs>